Good morning, class six. Today we are going to start a new chapter. That is chapter five, separation of substances. What does separation means? Separation means to separate two or more components from a mixture. Mixture. What is mixture? Mixture is formed when two or more components are mixed together in a particular composition or ratio. what does composition and ratio means that means in a particular amount for example if i have three components that is component a b and c and i'll mix them in 10 40 50 ratio or in 20 30 50 ratio so i'll get my mixture similarly if i have only two components then i can mix them in either 50 50 ratio or i can mix them in either 75 or 25 ratio right so mixture is formed by when two or more components are mixed together in a particular ratio or composition okay and separation means to separate those components from that mixture that mixture we are separating the component then why we made it actually in a daily life we see different kind of mixtures and there are some components which are useless or they become useless after the formation of a particular required substance we need to make right very common example i'll take from your home that is tea we separate tea leaves we have added them during the cooking but we separate them before serving right because they are useless now so tea leaves are separated from the liquid that is a tea with a strainer and you have noticed there are so many instances which we can uh, observe in our daily life in which we use different methods of separation of mixture right for example if i'll talk about farmers farmers separate grains from the stalk what that stalk means stalk means the crop plant from which we are going to obtain those grains actually during harvesting harvesting means to cut the matured plant okay so during harvesting we cut the whole plant that whole plant is not of our use only the seeds or grains present on that plant are useful so farmers separate those seeds or grain from the stalk that plant so that is another method of separation milk or curd are churned very nicely to make butter why what we are separating here you can see the figure 5.2 that in this figure we can see butter is taken out by churning mix or curd butter is an butter is an example of fat that means milk or curd is churned to separate the fat from that milk and curd right so very common example i have for you uh, you don't like vegetables in some cases or very uh, a particular kind of vegetable so whenever your mother serve food with those vegetables in it either chilies or other green vegetables you can say so what do you do you carefully separate them before eating them right that is another method of separation in which you are picking those particular vegetables and you are separating them so this is another method what if i'll give you a bucket full of mangoes and guavas and i ask you to separate them you will easily separate them just picking one fruit by one by one and keeping as them aside right why it is easy because you identify both the fruits plus it is quite large in size so you are able to pick them easily but what if i'll give you a glass full of mixture that mixture contain two components one is sand and one is salt is it possible to separate it you must be thinking it is impossible even you are not able to think how you will separate sand and salt right don't worry we are going to study the method of separation of salt and sand in this chapter but before that let us go through some of the activities activity 1 in activity 
we are going to study about some of the reasons why we are studying this chapter why we are separating the components why it is required so here is table 5.1 why do we separate substances in this figure we have taken only some of the example okay and we are going to study more in the chapter so very first process of separation is separation of stones from rice is stone useful i think no that is why we are separating them similarly churning milk to obtain butter we need fat in a separated form so that's why we are churning the milk separate tea leaves why we are separating it because tea leaves are no no more of use right so we separate them then what is the purpose the purpose is same that i am telling you to separate two different component but useful component there are different cases in which both the components are useful and in some cases one is useful one is useless and in other the uh, the second component is any kind of impurity okay so what we do with these separated components we throw them away if they are not useful or they are useless okay and if they are useful we keep them separately we can use at the same time and we can use them later on whenever they are required okay so next topic is methods of separation but before studying these methods we should keep in mind on what basis we are going to choose these methods the substances to be separated may be particles of different size yes the substances which we are going to separate we have uh, are of different size and we have to keep in mind the size of that particular substance to be separated or component to be separated before choosing a method of separation along with this we should always consider the states of matter before choosing the met, uh, method of separation because your material uh, uh, may be in the form of solid liquid or gas okay so we have to keep these points in mind before studying the methods of separation now methods of separation very first method that we use in our daily life is hand picking very easy hand picking that means we just pick the material by our hand and we are separating it right so in this what we are going to study in this activity to bring a packet of food grain purchased from a shop okay we will get a packet a small packet of grain from the shop and what we will do we will get the plate we just empty that packet on that uh, plate and what we will observe we will observe that that grain have some husk particles and some stone particles right stones we know what is husk husk is the cover the broken cover of those grain okay when the farmer separate those grains from the stock those broken husk come into the Uh, grain, or you can say, come along with the grain. So these three items are there. You can easily pick the stones, right, by hand, and you can separate them. What about the husk particles? We will study in the next method. So the very first separation is separation of stone, and this method is called hand picking, in which we can separate slightly larger sized impurities like either pieces of dirt stone or larger husk particles you can separate from wheat rice and pulses okay the quantity of such impurities are usually not very large if they are very large then you uh, you have to spend lot and lots of time okay so hand picking is convenient method for separating substances another method is threshing we have started about the separation of grain from the husk from sorry from the stalk right here the method is threshing in this method you have seen the crop the farmers cut those crops make it bundle and keep it on the field okay later on when the whole plant is totally sun dry at that time that bundles are beaten al uh, along a 
hard surface against a hard surface why so that the grains are uh, grains can easily separate from the dried stock here stocks are dried in the sun before grain is separated from each other from them each stock has many grain seeds attached to it right but these grains are quite small in size if we are going to pick one grain one by one it will take lots of lots of time so, and it is quite hard to separate them right it's not about apple and mango we can go and pick from the tree it is grain it is quite small in size so keeping in mind the size of the grain we are going to choose the method of threshing in this grain seeds are much smaller so plucking them will not help us okay the process that is used to separate grain from stalk is threshing in this process the stalks are beaten to free the grain you can see the figure the farmer is beating the bundle of crop that dried crop against a stone right so that is threshing nowadays threshing can be done with the help of machines and the, those machines are called thresher activity 3 make a mixture of dry sand with sow dust and powdered dry leaves you can just take some of the dry leaves you can crush them make it into a powder okay then you can take some grains and mix those powdered leaves with that grain now separate it is this possible for you to hand pick or thresh it no in this method uh, method we are going to study about the use of wind actually there are two components in the mixture one is your grain one is your crushed powdered leaves right so those powdered crushed leaves are lighter in weight on the other hand grain are heavier than those powdered leaves okay so what we will do we'll take the mixture to the open ground and we'll stand on a raised platform either you can use stool put the mixture in a plate hold the plate or sheet of paper whatever you are using to separate the mixture at your shoulder height means you are supposed to raise your hand okay then till it slightly you have to just tilt it slightly on the outer side so that mixture starts sliding okay then what will happen if you just yes if you just blow the mixture that lighter impurity will blown off okay so this method is called winnowing in which we use wind the word winnowing starts with win that contain wind okay so winnowing means the use of wind to separate the components winnowing is the method in which we separate components with the help of wind in this method we have two components one is heavier one is lighter and when we use wind the wind carry the lighter component with it to some distant part okay distant area so this will help to separate the grain grain will fall nearby you on the other hand the lighter impurity will blown with the wind to the distant area so this is another method this method is commonly used by farmers to separate lighter husk particles from heavier seed or grain the husk particles are carried away by wind these seeds of grain uh, get separated from the uh, these impure sort impurities okay and they form a heap near by the platform yes the separated husk is used for many purposes such as fodder or cattle that separated husk that will be fall at the distant area can be used for cattle okay now another method is sieving sieving means sieve or you can say a plate with many holes that holes depend on the size of that particular impurity we want to separate okay so we need to remove impurities and the bran that may be present in it 
then how we will separate we can use sieve that sieving allow the fine floor particles to settle or to come out of that holes okay those holes and the larger impurities will remain on the sieve this will help us to separate very fine particles from the larger particles okay yes in this uh, i have uh, one example for the from the floor mill floor uh, in floor mill impurities like husk and stones are removed from wheat before grinding them otherwise those impurities will grind with the floor so a bag full of wheat is poured in a slanting sieve slanting sieve means which is slightly tilted okay so the sieve uh, remove those pieces of stone stock and husk that remains in the wheat after threshing and winnowing means after the process of threshing there are possibilities that the small pieces of stones and stock or husk are still present in our wheat rice or whatever crop we have after winnowing we have some ha uh, heavy impurities like stone because the stones are heavier they will also fall near the heap so they are still in our crop okay in our grain so that sieving will help us to remove all those impurities now we can give another example of the uh, sieving at construction site to separate the stones from the cement or the sand used for the construction we use large sized sieves at the construction site so there are, these are some of the methods that are used to separate material in our daily life we will study other methods like sedimentation decantation filtration in our next lecture thank you